come to worship you. Amen. We pray let the Holy Ghost minister in this house in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put on that garment of praise this morning. Come on, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you prepared for those that love you here today. Amen. Let the name of Jesus be lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us there's a time for all things. Amen. Praise God. There's nothing worse than going home wishing that you'd have done something just a little bit different. Come on, wishing you'd have just went ahead and got in. Amen. To that glory cloud that comes down. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. There's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. If you're visiting today, we welcome you. Make yourselves at home. Amen. We have many that are out today traveling. We want to pray for them. The Lord would keep his hand upon them. Uh, my wife and I got in last night from about 2,600 miles. Uh, we've been, we've been on, the, on the racetrack, as it were, and we've been in the slow lane, and and we've been stuck in traffic, and we've seen all kinds of things. And uh, it's just good to be home. Amen. Amen. It is good to be home. Praise God. My son's told me, he said, whatever the traffic is, you run with it. And don't hit your brakes when you see a cop. That goes against everything I've always <laughs> believed in. <laughs> Amen. But I could tell why, because when you have so many thousands of people eight lanes wide and everybody's running 90 or 100 it don't really matter what they're running as long as you're keeping up amen praise god i wonder if there's a lesson in that praise god no matter what the devil's doing if we'll just keep on running the race come on if we'll just keep on the steady pace we're gonna make it amen praise god praise god amen want to continue to remember sister cruda sister mills sister dilks Sister Galvon, sick today, Anita Nolan, Robin Miller, Anna Adams, Monica Hernandez, Debbie Crudis, Donna Halterman, Benjamin and Vanji are traveling. Let's pray the Lord keep his hand upon them. Mike Sevsuk, Sevsuk, I believe. Okay. Giles Corum, Sidney Reed, Daniel Garza. Amen. Praise God. Others this morning by the lifting of our hands. Praise God. Amen. Just call out that name to the Lord. God already knows all about it, but he said you have not because you ask not. Amen. We need faith this morning to believe for every miracle, every touch, every healing, Lord. God, we've prayed many a prayer, and we'll keep on praying because we know our God cannot fail in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer this morning, I invite you to come. Amen. Come and let us anoint you with oil and pray that prayer of faith. Come believing. Amen. Not that we can do anything. Not that the oil can do anything. But through faith in God and obedience to God, if you'll bring your faith and come believing, it is God who heals, God who saves, God who delivers. Amen. Would you pray with me right now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your prayer.
my brother, Lord, washed and cleansed in the mighty name of Jesus. For the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, what a mighty God. Glory to God. Glory. Just let Thank him you worship. Jesus. Oh, Thank hallelujah, you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Lord, we love and praise you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, God has Hallelujah. added to the church today. You, You've got a brand new brother in Christ this morning. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Praise God. Let's not forget Monday night prayer. 6 p.m. Wednesday night service, 7 p.m. Sunday morning worship, 10.30 a.m. Always be prepared to come to worship, to bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Hun, if you'll make your way up here for just a moment. Come on, come on. Obey your elder. i got to obey her. She's older than I am. Amen. When we were about eight years old, she asked me to marry her. That's not true. I didn't know her it's at eight her years old. Oh, but at 18, I did. And uh, me and this young lady have been married 49 years this past Wednesday. Pray for us. We make 50. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. We also have some birthdays today. Amen. Some people getting older. Amen. Karen. Kareem Holloway. Okay. Jeff Hamilton. Kristen Benally. Amen. We're going to sing happy birthday okay. and happy anniversary here Brother in Lee? just a little bit. No. Brother Lee. Praise God. Yes. Okay, we got someone else being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins. Glory to God. Glory. 
Stephania Robinson. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I've been changed. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Glory. glory well, thank to God. God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, there's a new name written down in glory.
Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. We'll have another one coming out here in just a minute. Amen. Praise God. Easter Sunday is two weeks away. Uh, we need candy and plastic eggs for the children. There will be a cookout after service uh, that Sunday two weeks away on Easter Sunday. So if you can help out with that, we'll... Amen. Just go ahead and bring your stuff. Amen. Sister Sutter, come and sing this morning. Amen. Let's worship with her.
take another breath. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be in a glorified body, in a glorified state. Praise God. Amen. Some people say, well, I don't know if I can praise God that long with a glorified body. Praise God. Here you can. Is. Let's shake the hand of our sister. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on. Go shake her hand. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, Jesus, I'll never forget what you done for. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You can't do anything better than obey the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Two of them went down in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. There's only one way to be baptized. That's in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other baptism, for neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Bible says, how be it this knowledge is not in every man. Another scripture says they are ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Amen. Praise God. So I appreciate those today that obeyed the word of the Lord. There are many to pray for. The young lady, Sydney Reed, amen, praise God. Brother Geiger's been working with her 
Amen. Praise the Lord. And God, amen, through prayer has touched her and given her an answer. Amen. We're praying that they will find their way to the house of God. <laughs> Me and Brother John were at uh, United the other day because we are united. And we ran into a man that sees us there pretty often. We get sandwiches there on a regular basis after our Bible studies. And we talk to him every time we're in there. Well, he came up to me and he said, I want to tell you that every time I'm having a bad day, you come in and you always encourage me and I feel better. Now, he's not of this persuasion. He needs to be. He is on kidney dialysis twice a week. His name is Daniel Garza. I told him we would be praying for him today, so we're going to lift him up, amen, but he says he's fixing to be baptized in the titles, and I took a few moments and I said, you need to read the book of Acts, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the one that was crucified for you. All we can do is pray because God is the only one that gives revelation, no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw him. All revelation comes from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Because the Bible says, having eyes they see not, having ears they hear not. And it's the Lord, amen, that must reveal himself to them. Praise God. Thank God for the preached word of the Lord. But we can preach until we're blue in the face, amen, praise God. But if you're hungry and you're thirsty after righteousness, the Bible said, you shall be filled. Amen. Brother Hunt's already mentioned he's been two weeks away from Easter Sunday. I'm surprised so many people are not here today. I didn't know the rain would keep them out. Praise God. Amen. I guess uh, they need to build an ark. Oh, spring break. Okay. All right. Thank you, sister. Uh, I like what Brother Hamilton told me. You've heard me say that there's one thing that God kept out of the Bible, and that was your opinion. He also said, he also kept out of the Bible your excuses. Everybody's going to stand before the Lord one day without excuse. We're all going to give an account before the Lord. You're going to say, well, God, I didn't really think it was that important. Amen. Let me tell you something. Every word of God is important. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. With Easter Sunday just around the corner, we still need some candy and some plastic eggs. People, amen, have been already bringing plastic eggs, but we need some candy. I guess you haven't brought them yet because you're afraid the pastor might take his tithes up front. Amen. Praise God. And uh, the others that are not here today, pray for them. I got a hold of Sister Gianni the other day. She just had that brand new baby, two weeks old now. And told her, I said, we are missing you guys. We want to see that baby. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Children, amen. Now, pray for another man. His name is Jeremy. Uh, me and Brother Aiden got to witness to this man the other day. He's a city worker. While Aiden was down here helping me, praise God. That's where I got my whiplash. That's why I'm hurting today. I let him drive the golf cart, and he turns on a dime. <laughs> amen. But there were two city workers out there. We took them some water. And we began to talk to them, and the guy says, what kind of church are you? I said, we are true Pentecost. Amen. And uh, the man says, well, I'm going to come check you out. And I said, you need to check us out? And he says, I've got five kids. I said, you need to have your kids in the house of the Lord. We gave both of them a card. Praise God. Amen. All you can do is invite. Praise the Lord. But if a person is hungry... The Bible said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, will lead you and guide you into all truth. Praise God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody say Sunday school. We got a lot of our kids are missing this morning. Praise God. A lot of people are out today. Shame, shame, shame. Praise the Lord. Everybody needs to be in Sunday school. We used to sing that song, amen. Everybody ought to be in Sunday school. The men, the women, the boys and the girls, everybody ought to be in Sunday school. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word of the Lord. No, wait just a minute. Praise God. Amen. Brother Hamilton, if you and Brother Bishop would help me, praise God. I got two uh, baptismal certificates, one for Brother Rodriguez, one for Sister 
uh, Stephania. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is a testimony. The Bible says in Revelations 12 and 10, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Praise God. You say, why do you hand out certificates, amen, praise So you can wave that in the face, amen, of Satan, praise God, and say, take that, devil. You're condemned already, but I'm not, praise God. Amen. We're going to go to three places of Scripture. Oh, yes, we need to pray for Skylar. This is his last service. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Could we pray? Come on, Skylar. Come on up here. We're going to anoint you that God would keep his hand upon you. He is going into the military. Amen. I want him to send me a picture after he gets that crew cut. In the name of Jesus, let's pray for him right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, keep your hand upon him. Watch over him. Keep him safe, Lord Jesus, I pray, God. We're asking, Lord, for your protection. We're praying for your provision in the name of Jesus. God, again, watch over us, Lord, as you already have. God, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Kristen and Alonzo are not here today. I thought they were going to be with us today. Many are missing today. Praise God. Brother Hamilton, amen, turned 50 yesterday. I called him to wish him happy birthday yesterday. His wife was close to the phone. She could hear me. And I told her, I said, Pat, I said, before you put those candles on his cake, you better get a fire permit. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Going to the word of the Lord, Old Testament, New Testament, book of Zechariah, chapter 9, Malachi, chapter 3, Luke, chapter 19. I'll repeat those. Amen. Zechariah, chapter 9. To help you out, amen, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament, and then the one book before that is Zechariah. It's going to help us, praise God. Until we learn where the scriptures are and where the books are located, praise God, it doesn't help. I mean, it doesn't hurt, amen, for us to help like that. Amen. There's some books, amen, that are just in the hiding. Amen. If you haven't read them in a while, amen, sometimes they're stuck in between and Maybe you might have a hard time to find that, praise God. Some of those books only have one chapter in them. And I know what you're saying. I wish we had a one-chapter preacher. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse number 9, one verse of Scripture. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. This is a prophecy of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is known as the Lord's triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. Prophesied, the finger of prophecy is upon this, praise God. How many people know that every prophecy comes to pass? Amen. Praise God. You don't have to worry about the promises of God or the prophecies of the Lord. Amen. They will come to pass, amen, in their chosen time. Amen. Praise God. If you haven't gotten the Holy Ghost yet, be assured it's on its way. You say, well, I've been looking for it for a long time. Praise God. Brother John, the Holy Ghost is real. Amen. Brother John got the Holy Ghost last Sunday morning. Amen. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is in this house. So that means, amen, praise God, that you can receive the Holy Ghost this morning. We've got to learn how to worship and to yield, amen, to the presence of God. Amen. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost today. It only takes two things to receive the Holy Ghost, faith and repentance. Praise God. Amen. And if you, I know you believe in the scriptures. Amen. I've already talked to some of you. 
Amen. Praise God. But we need to hold fast and we need to repent. Some people have said, well, I don't know what to repent of. That alone tells you you need to repent. Praise God. Because we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity from our mother's womb. The Bible says, praise God, that our righteousness was as filthy rags in the sight of God. But thank God, amen, he doesn't want to leave us that way. He came to cleanse us. He came to renew us. He came to call us, praise God, he meant to be his children, praise God. Malachi chapter 3, one verse of Scripture, verse number 1. These two Old Testament prophets joined together, amen, in this messianic prophecy. He says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 19. I'm going to start reading at verse number 28. Very familiar passage of Scripture for those of us that have been in the church for any length of time. Praise God. I never get tired, amen, of preaching the word of the Lord. I never get bored with Acts 2.38. Amen. 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 Praise God. It's how you get in. It's how you're going to get out. Amen. amen. Luke chapter 19, verse number 28. And when he had thus spoken, speaking of Jesus, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him, and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, Why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. Praise God. Amen. I'm just going to go ahead and just give this to you. The reason why that man had the donkey, why, amen, praise God, he had that property, praise the Lord. The Lord gave it to him because he knew he could get it when he needed it. The reason why God has blessed some, amen, well, he hasn't blessed others because he says, I know that when I need it, I can get it. Praise God. That man's name is never mentioned in the scriptures. You need to put your name there, praise God. What God has blessed me with, amen, am I willing to give it to him whenever he needs it? Everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And as they were loosing the colt, verse 33, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Man, you talk about honoring God. You talk about respect and reverence to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 37, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen. That's enough to go home on. Praise God. I want to read the next two verses. Praise God. Amen. Because there's a lesson in here for us. It says in verse 39, And some of the Pharisees, those were the religious people, from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. He answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. Praise God. If you won't praise him, someone else will. God, amen, has a creation, praise God, that knows who he is. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 1, the ass and the ox, they do know their owner, praise God. They know their crib. They know their creator, praise God. Church, do you know who Jesus is? Amen. He's the God that created all things. He's the one that makes all things new, praise God. He made you a new creature in Christ. We've come to praise God. We're not going to let, amen, a stone take our place. We're going to learn how to worship and praise the Almighty God in this house. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Let's clap in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
You may be seated this morning. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Our reading today, amen, has been chosen on purpose, praise God, from the divine writings of both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Neither one outshines the other, praise God, amen. Sometimes, amen, we love preaching out of the New Testament, but I love the Old Testament just as much, praise God. In fact, one does not weigh, outweigh the other. I know the plan of salvation is found in the New Testament, but it's talked about, praise God, over and over all throughout the Word of God. In fact, when you read the Old Testament, you start stepping in, amen, to the finger of God, to the Word of God, amen. And you start finding prophecy, praise God. If you can get a hold of a promise and a word from the Lord, amen, you can dance for a while. You can shout on that, praise God. You say, but it hasn't happened yet. Amen. It's on its way, praise God. I serve a God that cannot lie. I serve a God that cannot fail. I'm here to tell you, has he not said, shall he not do it? Has he not spoken? Shall it not come to pass? That's the God that we live for, amen. That's the God that we serve for. All throughout the word of the Lord, both Old Testament and New Testament, we find him in things, amen, that are very enlightening. There were some things, amen, at times uh, they did not fully comprehend or understand, but there were some things, amen, that God made clear, and they said, this is our hope. We're waiting, praise God, for the promise to come. Amen. That's the way it is with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I got water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but it was some time later before I got the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell you, don't be discouraged. Get encouraged. God is in this house, and God, amen, is a promise keeper. Both Malachi and Zechariah tell of a day that will bring a glorious event in the lives of the people of God, a day of great promise, a day of great blessing, a day that would bring not only a glorious announcement but a glorious arrival. We find it in our text of Luke chapter 19. It is the focal point of what Malachi and Zechariah were prophesying about, praise God. Church, I just want to tell you something. I'm glad that God can use men today that can and prophesy about the things that are coming down the road. Uh, hey, we still get a word from the Lord every now and then. The gifts of the Spirit still operate. Uh, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge uh, and the gift of prophecy still operates in the house of God. Don't ever think, amen, that this is just old hat. Uh, I'm here to tell you, his word is brand new every morning. Uh, it is refreshing to the people of God. Uh, hey, church, God has a word, amen, for his people today. Amen. In Luke 19, that day amen, that was prophesied by Malachi and Zechariah was now coming to pass. It was the Lord's long-awaited day. It was the Lord's triumphal entry. On this day, Jesus comes riding in, uh, into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Now, hear me now. Just like the Scripture said, I'd like to tell you, praise God, the Bible is right. It'll always be right. Amen. You don't have to second-guess the Word of God. Has anybody ever read the back of the book? in the book of Revelations, amen. I realize we're going through some dark times. I realize, amen, our situations and our world is upside down. But I know a God, amen, that can turn our world right side up. I know a God, amen, that can turn the tide. I'm here to tell you, if you read the back of the book, stay in the church. I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to save you. I'm going to take you with me into heaven. Amen. There's not a one of us, praise God, that haven't waited, amen, for some things, amen, praise God. And it took, it seemed, forever. But you remember, amen, when the day happened. You remember, praise God, when you got the answer to your prayer. On this day, Jesus came just like the Scriptures had prophesied. And there's so much here, we don't have time to cover it all. But it was a day of much praise and celebration. Why? It was Passion Week. It was the Passover that was at hand. The priests were busy preparing for it. There's a lamb that's fixing to be offered. There's a sacrifice that's fixing to be made. You're not hearing me, praise God. And so they are feverishly working, trying to put things in order, praise God. While they were looking to the past, Jesus was coming in and bringing in the present, praise God. Hey, man, I know about Old Testament sacrifices, but this is the one that was going to be the eternal sacrifice. This was the lamb of God that was going 
going to take away the sins of the world. And there was much praise and celebration in the city. In fact, the whole city was in an uproar. And Jesus comes riding into Jerusalem. And the people are shouting. And the people are worshiping. Even the disciples, they are rejoicing. And the Bible says, with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Now please hear this. God's people still shout and worship God. God's people still praise and rejoice over what God has already done and what God is still doing. Amen. Look what he did today. You have to excuse me, but this is a red letter day. Amen. Praise God. Someone just got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone and just had their sins washed away. Somebody just put on the name of Jesus Christ. You're not hearing me, praise God. What a powerful day. What a great witness, amen. Jesus came riding into this service this morning. Jesus, amen, is here. He is our sacrifice. And I have to tell you, amen, this morning, amen, praise God, after a restless night, but it was a good night. Amen. Not every night is like that. Brother Hunt, I don't always get good sleep. Praise God. Sometimes I'm troubled over the ones, amen, that I'm praying for. Amen. I see people, amen, praise God. They're not as fervent as they used to be, not as zealous as they ought to be, praise God, when it comes to the things of God. But I want you to know, amen, for four hours, amen, the Lord dealt with me. I tossed and turned for at least two hours straight. It was so sweet. God was in that room, and God was dealing with me, praise God, and it was like a peace that came over me. But I couldn't sleep, praise God, because God was dealing dealing with my heart. Now, not every night is like that, but this was a very special moment. So I want you to know, right now in my heart, there's an expectancy in the air. air, air. There's an expedient, amen, in this place, praise God. I've got a feeling that God is not done yet. We've started, but we haven't finished yet. I believe that God is going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost this morning. Why don't we do it right now? Why don't we worship the Lord? Why don't we praise God? Amen. Hallelujah. The king has come to this place. Amen. Praise God. There ought to be shouting and joy. There ought to be worship and praise in the house. God's not done yet. I said he's not through yet. He just walked in, praise God. And if Jesus ever comes, it's because he's come to bring a promise to pass. This day was so powerful because there was a promise attached to it. And that promise always has to do with Jesus. It's about the Lord's coming. We're looking for Jesus to come any day now. Watch this, Titus 2 and 13. I chose these verses as God was dealing with my heart. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, praise God. Church, you're not hearing me. I'm still waiting. I'm still watching. I'm still longing. I'm still looking. But he's coming, praise God, just like he said. I I'm here to tell you, I am going to go up in the resurrection. I am rapture ready. I've got my reservation made. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. Let me give you another one. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. I realize, amen, that I... I can often say some things, amen, and repeatedly over it, but we have to be reminded, praise God. I read an article Sister Crudis gave me that there are some out there now teaching how dare churches today point people to their sins or tell them that they're guilty. My God, amen, how are we ever going to reach anybody if they think they're already saved without salvation, praise God. We still got to preach the anointed word of God. We still got to preach under the conviction of the Holy Ghost, praise God. We still need to know what sin is. Paul said, amen, I preach. You need to preach sin that it's exceedingly sinful, praise God. We got people that are downplaying the word of God. America, amen, is going to hell in a handbasket. But I'm here to tell you, 
There's a group of people that know how to pray. We know people that are going to pray, going to turn this country around. Come on, church. It's not beyond God to save a nation. God does not save us in our sins. He saves us from our sins. Matthew 25, 13, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh, praise God. It's one of expectancy and hope to the people of God, amen. It's our blessed hope. It's our blessed assurance. I like that song we didn't sing it this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Church, amen, you're not hearing what I'm saying. That's more than just a song. That's a declaration, praise God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Divine, I'm an heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. And then one of my favorite that I'm known to quote most often is Hebrews 10, verse 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump amen praise the church you're not hearing me that suddenly a pentecost is going to happen suddenly again with the coming of the lord again in luke 19 and 37 of our text there's a verse amen that we cannot uh, overlook or omit. We need to take it to heart. The Bible says these words when Jesus was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany. He wasn't there yet. He was only close. Amen. Praise God. He was still at a distance and the Bible says the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. You may think that I'm overacting this morning, but this scene is tremendously worthy praise God of mentioning and and preaching because it's not only crowded with people it's crowded with praise it's not only full of promise it's full of praise that means praise God you can still shout amen over your promise your miracle hasn't happened yet but you can still shout because it's on its way your healing may not happen today but it's still on its way and he that shall come will come and will not tarry Everybody say amen. amen. Jesus said in Matthew 25 and 13, I'm going to reiterate it. Praise God, because I want to make mention of something I feel we need to understand. He said, watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Son of Man cometh. And then in Luke 12 and 37, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Watching. The key word throughout the Old Testament, New Testament, with prophecy and promise has always been watch, watch and see, watch and behold. The name of the game is still watching and waiting. Watching and waiting are vital in receiving the promises of God. Watching and waiting are vital in receiving or having faith in God. We do not disbelieve in the word of God. I know that it's been a while, but I I'm still hanging on to the scriptures. I'm still holding fast to the word of God. Come on, church, amen. If you want something from the Lord and God has promised it to you in his book, just watch and wait, amen, praise God. Know that God is on his way, that God, amen, is going to fulfill what he has promised you in the past. Somebody say Amen. I like the story of Elijah. Amen. Praise God. First Kings chapter 17 and 18. Amen. He's my man. Praise anybody that can outrun a chariot and a horse for 20 miles. Praise God. Amen. He's my man. 
you didn't hear me. He outran King Ahab, amen, in his chariot and horse. He said, I hear the sound, amen, praise God, of rain, of the abundance of rain. And look at his split. Elijah takes off, praise God, and starts running, praise the Lord. Let me tell you something, praise God. We've got enough here to run the aisles. we got enough here to shout over. we got enough, amen, to respond, praise God. I hear the abundance of rain. I don't see a cloud yet in the sky. I don't hear it, amen, praise God. I don't have one drop falling yet, but hey. Hey, he's coming. I'm on my way. I think I'll take off running on the promise of God. Is that all right? Is that all right? Is that all right? Praise God. I'm here to tell you, praise God. God wants to do something this morning, and he wants to know, do you still believe it? Amen. Everybody say, man, he's my man. I say, he's my man. Praise God. Somebody say, they, that's right. Amen. Praise God. Both Malachi and Zechariah tell of a day that is so monumental for us to understand. Praise God. I'm trying, amen, to get my bearings right now. But here's a man by the name of Elijah. He could call fire down with one prayer meeting. Yeah, I understand that. But it just goes to show me, praise God, amen. You don't understand, Brother Crutus. I'm just flesh and bone. Who told you that lie? When God breathed into you the breath of life, man became spirit, praise God. And when God gave you the Holy Ghost, you became a son of God. You have access into the throne room of God. Amen. You can pray a mighty prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. Praise God. And you say, hey, what's the big deal? You've been requested to come to the prayer room and get there early and pray because we want to see the fire fall. He can end a three and a half year drought with one prayer meeting. But then God says, I want you to wait for three and a half years. He's waiting. He's sent to the brook called Cherith. And he waits there and a dirty bird by a raven feeds him twice a day. And then one day the brook dries up. And then he's sent, amen, into the city of Zarephath. To a widow woman, Gentile woman, praise God, amen. And there God said he would sustain him. And for three and a half years, Elijah is still watching and waiting. He's looking and abiding, praise God. Don't tell me it doesn't take faith to wait on God, amen. Come on, church, praise God. Without faith, amen, we will fail. We will falter, praise God. It takes faith to receive from God. I'm still waiting on the coming of the Lord. I know that he's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I don't know the day or the hour of the coming of the Son of Man, but I do know He's coming. So I'm still watching. I'm still waiting. It's been 40 years since God filled me with the Holy Ghost. It's been 40 years I've been preaching this Word. I'm still waiting for the coming of the Lord. But let me tell you, amen, I don't care if the brook dries up. I don't care if He sends you to the city of Zarephath. The promise of God is still going to come. That's right. That's right. Amen. Praise God. So we say amen. amen. Praise God. It takes faith to wait on God. Amen. Without faith, it's impossible. Now, you can't please God without faith. Well, it's sure been dry around here. Well, start praying for rain. The farmers used to say when it was dry, it seemed like they were going through a drought. They say, when you go to church, carry an umbrella. Come on, come on. But there's not a cloud in the sky. There's no forecast of rain. Carry an umbrella. Carry your faith. Keep your faith, praise God. If God ever promised it, it's still coming to pass. Well, it hadn't happened yet. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Carry an umbrella. You're not hearing me. Carry your faith when you walk through that door. Believe in the impossible. Believe in the miraculous. Believe in the supernatural. Carry your umbrella. Carry your faith into the house of God. In our text of Luke 19, there's a promise that is now coming to pass. It was long awaited. It was a prophecy, man, from the old days. 
It's so monumental that it has the finger of God on it. It's got years and years of expectancy and hope with it. Both Malachi and Zechariah tell of a day that's coming. Malachi said, when the Lord shall suddenly come to his temple, Zechariah said that a king would come having salvation riding upon an ass. And these two prophecies were the hope of the entire nation of Israel. This is what they longed for. This is what they looked for. It's what the Jewish faith continued to rest upon, that a king would one day come and usher in a brand new kingdom. You're not hearing me, praise God, amen. I know that it's bad on this earth, praise God, and I realize, amen, that there's some things that are happening in this world. But, honey, this ain't all there is. There is another kingdom coming, praise God, and that king that's going to usher in that kingdom is coming again. He's going to spread the eastern skies. He's coming, praise God, riding on a white horse. He's going to take us out of here. You're not hearing me, praise God. I'm here to tell you the king, amen, is in the house, and he's coming, amen, to take us home. Let me try it again. Praise God, amen. They waited for a king that would usher in a brand new kingdom. There would be no more political rule. I'm waiting for that day. Amen. Brother, amen, praise God. I better not. He's awake. I was going to talk about Sleepy Joe, but he's awake. Praise God. I said there'll be no more political rule. There'll be no more Roman oppression. I mean, I'm here to tell you, amen, praise God, there was evil domination during the days that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and they were looking for their king to come. They were ready for a new kingdom, and on this day, Jesus rides into the city just like the Scripture said. Luke 19, 38, they said, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. No wonder they were excited, praise God, because at last the hope of Israel had finally come. Their longer awaited dreams and hopes, amen, were now appearing before them, and they began to worship God, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. You're not hearing me. You know what it's saying? Jesus is the King. Jesus is the name of the Lord. You got to get this. Jesus is the King, and Jesus is the name of the Lord, praise God, amen. Zechariah 14 and 9, didn't read it to you, but it's in the same chapter that I read, our first verse of verse 9, but verse uh, 14 and 9, I'm sorry, chapter 9, it says, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and his name one? God's name has always been one. His name has always been Jesus. I just lowered him in the bomb, praise God. His name has always been Jesus, amen. For 4,000 years, his name was hidden and concealed among the prophets. For 4,000 years, from Genesis to the book of Malachi, it's been guarded and kept, held in secrecy, kept in silence. But when you come to the New Testament, on the birth of Jesus Christ, the miracle of the ages, you find more than a miracle birth. You find an unfolding revelation not only that a virgin would conceive, but that the name of God would finally be revealed. Those angels that were singing, praise God, amen, in the heavens, amen, praise God. This day in the city of David is born unto you a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Not only was there a Redeemer, but a Redeemer with a name. I haven't reached some of you yet, praise God. Isaiah 9 and 6, you know it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. This is seven to 800 years prior to the birth of Jesus Christ. There is prophecy, God's fingers on his word. Amen. People are longing and waiting for this prophecy to come to pass. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. A child speaks of the flesh. The son speaks, amen, of deity. That there would be, amen, human, humanity and deity that would be fused together, praise God. Don't let that confuse you. I've got people today say, I just can't understand the oneness of God. Then go right 
back to Matthew chapter 1, praise the Lord, and the angels are singing and shouting over something that is so glorious and so powerful that's never been done before, amen, and God robed himself in flesh and became a man without ceasing to be God, amen, praise God, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of his government there shall be no end. Jesus said, I have all power in heaven and earth, amen, from everlasting to everlasting. Everybody say amen. And when Mary looked at that child, she called his name Jesus. And when Joseph heard from the angel Gabriel, he said, his name is Jesus. So the angels call him Jesus. Prophecy calls him Jesus. Heaven and earth calls him Jesus. That all, that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, amen. And that every tongue should confess, watch, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Do we understand that in the story of redemption and of the cross and the crucifixion, and I have to tell you, amen, Calvary still moves me. The suffering and the pain, the things that Jesus suffered for us. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, his visage was so marred that even his disciples could not recognize him. That cat of nine tails, amen, had ripped him open, had beaten him senselessly. Amen. Praise God. They could not even recognize who that was hanging on the cross. I've read some articles that it's very possible that his intricles were hanging out, that he was so bruised and so battered, praise God, that the pain was excruciating. And I'm here to tell you, when I look at that, amen, I realize he was not uh, uh, the one, amen, praise God, that was sinful. I'm the one that should have been on the cross, but he willingly took my place. And I can't believe that anybody has to to make you come to church. I can't believe that anybody has to make you come early to pray and praise God. If you could ever get a picture of Calvary, praise God, and what Jesus Christ did for you and what he did for me. Let me try it again, Romans 5 and 8. But God committeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. Amen. This event is so monumental in Luke chapter 19. It's called Jesus' triumphal entry. Have you ever wondered why the word triumph is used? Because when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that day, watch me now, after 33 years of human existence, after 33 years of continued life on the earth, facing every sinister trick of Satan, confronting every hardship of evil and sin that was presented on the earth. Not once did Jesus ever tell a lie. Not once did he ever make a mistake. He had not committed one crime. Not one offense could be labeled or put on Jesus. Not one sin, not one evil had Jesus ever committed. And that's the reason why we can shout today, praise God, because he that came riding into the street was our eternal sacrifice. He was our Passover lamb. He was sinless, praise God, without spot, without blemish, praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says he's coming back for a church in Galatians chapter 5 and 27 that's without spot or without blemish how can that happen only through him that was riding through the city only through Jesus Christ and his blood shed could we be found spotless amen and without blemish hear me now 33 years amen he faced the onslaught amen of Satan's devices Praise God, and not one time did Jesus ever falter or fail. And as he enters into the city of Jerusalem, come on, musicians. Here comes the spotless lamb. Here comes our sinless sacrifice. Here comes the perfect Savior. And the disciples are shouting. 
with a loud voice and worshiping. Our king has come. There's a new kingdom on the horizon. Now let me tell you something, amen, because I want to clarify something. He did not come to establish an earthly kingdom. The Bible says in Romans 14 and 17, somebody get that for me, praise God. Well, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When Jesus rode in, praise God, yes, he was the king of kings, and he did come to bring us a kingdom. And there were those, amen, that questioned Jesus. And they said, what shall this man do, praise God? And there's some would say, what does it mean, praise God? And some would say, well, this one here, amen, will continue, will not die until he sees the kingdom of God first. And some were thinking, amen, that's going to happen in the heavens. He's going to live forever. No, he was talking about the day of Pentecost, when the day when the kingdom of God is going to come. When you receive the Holy Ghost, uh, you get the king, uh, and he brings a brand new kingdom into your life, praise God. Uh, the old Old man, amen, is done away with. A new man arises in his place. Uh, praise God, amen. Come on, church, amen. And while, amen, he rode into the city, they're worshiping, they're praising, amen, and they're shouting unto the Lord, praise God. This was the Lord's triumphal entry because in just a few days, amen, praise God, he's going to offer himself on that old rugged cross, amen, praise God, and every sin that's ever been committed, every evil that's ever been done, hey, he's going to conquer death, hell, and the grave. Let's sing before the Lord. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. I remind us, church, there's another day that's soon to come. It's going to happen in another realm. It will be amplified. There will be praise and worship as there was on that day. John on the Isle of Patmos gives us a glimpse of that day of triumph and victory that is yet to come in Revelations 19, verses 11 through 16. He says, And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him called Faithful and True. His eyes were a flame of fire, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, Lord of lords. There's another triumphal entry at the Battle of Armageddon. Praise God, the rapture is going to take place and we're going to be with the one that returned for us because he promised it to his people. Put your hands together. Let's clap the Lord. Let's clap unto Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I guess the greatest thing, amen, about all of this, praise God, had it not been for Jesus, amen, being sinless, without spot, without blemish, praise God, not one stain had ever marred him. He had never done an evil thing, praise God, never had an evil thought, praise the Lord. He resisted all of the temptations. He left us an example, praise God, that we too can overcome. He tried to encourage the disciples before he ascended up into heaven. He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome come the world praise God amen I'm here to tell you there's another triumphal entry amen and you and I are going to split the eastern skies and we're going up amen with a shout of triumph praise God amen because we too are now sinless before the Lord according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him another triumphal entry is coming Amen. I'm so excited. I'm going to make sure that I'm one of his disciples. Amen. He was just close to entering the city, and they were already shouting, dancing, worshiping, and praising God. Hallelujah. He was just close to coming. Praise God. Church, we should never, ever come to the house of God without a shout in our heart. Put your hands together. Let's clap one last time. Hallelujah. He that shall come will come. He will not tarry. It's just for a little while. Hey, church, we're closer than we've ever been. We're on the horizon. Jesus Christ, amen, is fixing to sound the trumpet. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, keep seeking it because that's your resurrection power. That's how you're going to get out of here, praise God. Thank God for those, amen, that are baptized in Jesus' name, praise God, but you haven't received the Holy Ghost yet. That means you're on the right side of Calvary, but on the wrong side of Pentecost. But Pentecost is coming, praise God. You can count on it. God promised it to you. For this promise is unto you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, why don't you lift a hand right now and say, God, here am I. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit, praise God. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus, Lord, you promised it. I'm going to take you at your word right now in the name of Jesus. Receive you the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Over 8,000 promises in the word of God, and every one of them are for you today. Amen. Let's thank the Lord one last time. We're fixing to go home, but I'd like to leave with a shout. I'd like to say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. God, I'm going to shout before you get here. Hey, he's coming back with a shout. We're going out with a shout. Amen. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen Wednesday night, but last Wednesday night we had a shouting service. The Spirit of the Lord even manifested himself again. And I have to tell you, praise God, that God inhabits the praises of Israel, which means he inhabits the praises of his people. Don't worry about what your neighbor might say or think. Who cares? Turn loose. Who cares what they think? What does he think? Amen. Amen. If I read my Bible right, I know we got to go home. But in John chapter 4, the Bible says, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him, praise God. You don't have to be educated, amen, to worship God. You just got to be in love with Jesus. You got to worship him, praise God, because you want everything that he's promised you. <laughs> Brother Hunt, always, Brother Hunt always brings it up, worship. Worship, 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 worship. Are you ready? The original Greek language, every time it says worship, 
It really says worth-ship. He's worth our worship. He's worth our praise. He's worth our thanks. He's worth, amen, our gratefulness, praise God. It's worth-ship, praise God. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. So John said, worthy is the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. The men have a Bible study today at 3 o'clock. If you can make it, it's in the back in our fellowship hall. Praise God. We cover a lot of things in there. We'll be opening it up. Sister Crudis slipped me a little note the other day. She said, why can't we have like a Sunday night fellowship? Amen. And come back on a Sunday night. We might do that maybe once a month or twice a month. Amen. And just come back on Sunday night to have a fellowship back here and enjoy, amen, the people's presence. Did I read it right? Yeah, she put it on there. I know what she wants. She wants to get some work out of me. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to start doing that. We're going to incorporate that. And we're going to come back at least one Sunday a month, if not twice, every other Sunday. Amen. Praise God. If it works out. And we'll come back here. We'll have fellowship in the back. And we'll have a good time with God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, this is time, amen, for us to get together. Amen. Pray. We need to be in one mind, one accord, in one place. Amen. Praise God. There's a power in unity. The Bible says one can put to flight a thousand, but two ten thousand. Praise God. Uh, it'll blow your mind what God will do when we get together. Praise God and say, hey, we're here for the purpose of the kingdom. We're here for the glory of God. We're here to give ourselves. Amen. Unto Jesus Christ. Can I get one more hand clap of praise? Could you thank the Lord? Hey, could you shout with a shout of Amen. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Hey, 